Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold channel. Today we're going to look at Manifold Viewer, which is the uh, free product for Manifold System. Uh, we've just launched Viewer. Let's import a shape, shape file. We'll click File, Import, and uh, let's go here to this uh, folder here where I have some shape files, and here's a shape file. I'm going to click on that and then just click Import. Uh, Manifold knows from the file extension that it's a shape file, so it'll launch into a shape file importing mode. Uh, Viewer is the uh, free version of Manifold System Release 9. Oh, there it's done already. And it'll do everything that Release 9 will do, except that it's uh, read-only. So uh, you can look at stuff, and you can do all sorts of wonderful analyses and other sorts of things. You can even copy and paste out of Viewer, but you can't uh, actually save the project once you're done. For that, you'd need Manifold Viewer. Anyway, we've just uh, imported uh, 300,000 uh, points from a shapefile. I've double-clicked on this drawing to open it, and uh, that's what it looks like. We can uh, click here on the Contents pane and choose Style to uh, change the styling on that. Let's make those point points... Uh, Say that green color, and let's make them. Uh, well, let's make them four points in size. And I don't like the kind of thickish uh, round circle, so I can change the symbology on it. And uh, the stroke here changes the thickness of the uh, stroke. I'm going to change that to 0 0.5 points, which makes for a thin border. There, now we're done. Uh, if we want to see that in context, there's a variety of ways of doing that. Let's uh, let's create a map. Actually, let's create a let's create a a new data source layer. We'll use the Bing Maps uh, Street Layer, Street Map Layer. Manifold can connect to hundreds and hundreds of different data sources, actually thousands of them. Uh, and uh, the favorites list gives us those that we've saved as favorites that are kind of a uh, you know quick reference sort of deal. And uh, let's double click that open. And this is the Bing Street Map uh, Image Server from uh, Microsoft, and uh, it's bringing in tiles from uh, the Bing Image Server. The way I'm navigating here, by the way, is to zoom in. I'm right click click and drag to create that zoom box and it'll zoom into that box. If I left click and drag that is a uh, pan, ordinary pan operation. And If I like I can zoom in or zoom out. Sometimes the Bing server can't keep up with uh, moving very fast but Manifold is pretty good at interpolating around that. Now suppose we wanted to see the 300k uh, uh, drawing and the uh, Bing street maps drawing together. Well that's easy to do. What we can do is we can create a map. So I'll right click and create a map. A map is like a window frame. A map um, can have whatever projection you want it to have and you can drag and drop stuff into it to uh, see as layers. So there I've just dragged and dropped the Bing Street Map image into the uh, map window. And now I'm going to drag the 300 points layer into the map window too. And what I can do is I can uh, right click on this and choose zoom or uh, control click on it and that'll zoom to fit that layer. So we can see that the shape file imported is uh, 300,000 points that are more or less in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now what's interesting about this, if we want to undock these windows, we can do that. I can Alt-click the map window to undock it, and then I can resize the window. And I can Alt-click the, uh, the Bing Maps image too, to uh, resize that and move them around. And uh, I can unclick the, uh, uh, undock the uh, 300K uh, drawing by Alt-clicking it. And now we can zoom around and pan and zoom in all these uh, differently. Because we have three different windows and we have the same uh, drawing layers, same layers participating in three different windows, and they can all be zoomed and panned independently of each other. We're looking at a very small window here because we're doing this in a video that's basically HD quality video. But most people who do GIS these days will do GIS using one or two monitors, usually larger monitors, and uh, you can spread these all over the monitor, all over uh, however you like. You can run multiple manifold sessions, multiple viewer sessions, and have multiple windows. So let's cl let's close these other guys. So they don't, so it won't be distracting. And uh, let's dock this again by all clicking it, and let's do some cool stuff with this uh, with this display. And let's see what we can do with uh, drawings in uh, Manifold. We can do things like uh, click here in the Contents pane and choose Transform. And let's make buffers around these points. If I, um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit farther, and uh, let's click the buffer, a Transform, and Manifold right away will show a preview. This is a one meter buffer around each point. If I want to make that a 50 meter buffer, it automatically recalculates and draws 50 meter buffers. If I want to make that an 80 meter buffer, well, there, that's there. And uh, Manifold is so fast that it can preview uh, what it's showing you. So you can try all these different uh, transforms, and uh, it will, uh, let's make them 800 meters, and it'll recalculate those that fast. Let's see Manifold do something really fast. And I'm using Manifold here, by the way, to refer to both Manifold Viewer and to Release 9. They look identical, like, like I say, and they have identical capability. So let's zoom to fit the 300K layer. And uh, let's now uh, do a triangulation. 
a uh, triangulation on all these points. Uh, if you do it in QGIS, will take you hours. If you do it in uh, ARC, which is partially parallel, it'll do it in uh, uh, a matter of, uh, I think, about uh, 20 minutes, something like that. In a manifold, when I click triangulate all, it'll do it that fast, in other words, in seconds. So if I zoom in, we can see we have actually have indeed created a triangulation. Now, what we're doing here is we're seeing a preview. So we're not actually computing all the different uh, uh, triangles for these, which are about 600,000 of them uh, in real time. What we've done is we've, uh, we've done a preview. If you want to see how long it actually takes to compute a triangulation on all these and to store them, to store it as a separate uh, uh, a copy of this as a separate uh, drawing layer, we can click Add Component. So let's see how long that takes. One, two, three, click. Okay, it's now starting to calculate. And as you can see, it'll t tell us how long it takes here. It's taking four seconds, five seconds, six, seven, eight. And it gets finished at nine and a half seconds, something like that. And if we want to see the result, we can see that it created this drawing here. And it, that's the default name. We can change the name to where we want it. Uh, we can drag that and drop that into the map. And we can see how fast Manifold uh, Viewer will display 600,000 polygons that have been created uh, as, a, as a triangulation. And uh, these are the layer tabs here uh, for the map. We can uh, rearrange how those layer tabs uh, are arranged by dragging and dropping them. For example, we can drag the points above the triangulation drawing layer. And so now the points appear above the triangulation drawing layer. We can also move them up and down here uh, by selecting them and moving up and down the layers pane. Uh, let us uh, change the formatting of the triangulation drawing so we can see what's underneath it. Because right now it says it's creating, a, it's created, it's it's rendered using default gray formatting. So instead of the gray fill color for areas, I'll choose transparent fill color. So now we can see through that through those layers. And let's change the color to something that's a little bit prettier. All right, that makes that makes the green dots ugly. So let's click here on the uh, dots pane dots uh, layer, and we'll change that to a nice blue. So that's kind of a pretty effect. Uh, and uh, we can change these around however we like. It's all extremely rapid. Uh, let us do uh, one more thing. We're seven minutes into the video, so this is a long time, so bear with me. But I want to show you something that's really spectacular that a viewer can do, where a viewer can uh, uh, actually be used for actual analytic work. And uh, let's, uh, let's first, let's create a new folder. Where is it here? Right, down here, new folder. And we'll call that SRTM, create folder. And now to focus on that folder, I'm going to click File, Import. And uh, we're going to import a bunch of TIFFs, which are uh, SRTM TIFF uh, images. Uh, that's this Space Shuttle Radar Topology Mission. It's uh, all the world's uh, elevation. And it's importing those TIFFs. You can see it imported them very rapidly. It's about uh, over 100 megabytes of data. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another map here. Create new map. And I'm going to drag and drop all these... Uh, images into the map. Now the quick way of doing this is I can use a filter here to show only images. Now I can select all these and drag them and drop into the map together. And there you can see Manifold just opened up these four different tiles of uh, images and um, all put together. And these are uh, train elevation in the uh, Portland, Oregon area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these four different tiles into a single image. So I'm going to merge images and uh, we're going to call that a SRTM terrain. And I'm going to right click on this to use the coordinate system. So now it's going to use that for the right. It's going to take these four different images uh, and create a single about 100 megabyte, 100, 120 megabyte uh, terrain. It does it that fast. As you can see, Manifold is really fast. And uh, why did I take a second map? So now I can uh, drag and drop this as a layer into this map. Let's get rid of these guys. Delete from map. Delete from map. And let's drag the SR SRTM terrain into that map. Now we will control click on that to zoom to fit, and we can see where this terrain is. This terrain is actually around Portland, Oregon. And uh, there it is. And let's, uh, let's color this terrain. Let's uh, use a thematic format, and I'm going to use a single height channel, and I'm going to color that in CB Spectral palette. Uh, I'll do this very quickly because you can see the other videos for how all this is, this is done. I'm going to apply this palette to uh, that terrain. Click Update Style, and now we just color the terrain. Let's uh, use hill, do some hill shading, and I'll use a Z-scale, a 0 0.05, which I know from experience works about right. And there. And uh, what we've just done is we've created a single 120 megabyte 
uh, train elevation image, and we've colored it, and it shows the train elevation uh, er in the region around Portland, Oregon. If you want to see exactly where that is, we can uh, let's create another uh, a data source. And actually, I'll do it file, so you can see everything and not come off screen. F file data source, and this is a data source that I saved earlier, and it's a transparent uh, Google Street Map where it just shows the streets and the labels, but everything else is transparent. So we can throw that over top of the uh, train elevation label. And uh, let's create another one. Let's create file, create your favorite data source. Uh, oops. Here in the map. Here, here. And let's click file, create your favorite data source. Let's use Bing Maps Satellite. And I'll drop that in over top of the Bing Street Map image. So put that in right there. And now we have a map where the top layer is this Google Maps transparent you know, labels. And then we have the SRTM terrain, which we can turn on and off. And then we have the Bing Map satellite image. And then below that we have the Bing Map street map image, which, which we are not currently using. And uh, we can zoom in and see what all these are. For example, we want to zoom in right here. And there's uh, Mount St. Helens. Let's click this arrow to go back. Let's mo zoom in here to see Mount Rainier. And that's Mount Rainier National Park. And uh, let's do something kind of cool. I'm going to turn off the Google Street Map layer. And we can see here uh, how there's the, uh, if I turn this off, we can see the Bing Street satellite image is kind of got some terrain highlighting, but it's kind of flat. What we'd like to do is we'd like to combine the satellite image with the uh, SRTM terrain image uh, to do a combined effect where we use the terrain image, terrain, uh, computed terrain elevation with hill shading to synthetically uh, enhance the satellite image. And the way we do that is we click here on the Layers pane, and we set the, trans the transparency of this guy to, say, 50%. We do that. We now have a combined effect, and we can scroll this down somewhat. You can see here up, up on top how the, um, the um, Microsoft Bing imagery by the satellite imagery by itself is kind of flat colored, but we enhance the terrain aspect, the hill shading of it, by uh, combining the SRTM synthetic terrain with the uh, hill view, with the normal view. And uh, let's say we want to use this in a presentation. As I mentioned, viewers read only, so there's no way of saving this. But what we can do is we can undock this map like that, that map window. And uh, let's turn the Google Maps back on so we get some labels on there. And now let's say we want to use this as a display in uh, a web page or something like that that we've created. That's easy to do. We, we, we click on this map window to get, make, it have, make it have the focus. We click Alt Print Screen which means do a screen capture, just that screen that's in view. And now we launch on Microsoft Paint. Uh, and uh, let's say it's cold, paint from a cold start. I have did this before, obviously. So now we control V and we paste. And what we can do is we can crop and we can, uh, if you know how to use Paint or GIMP or uh, Photoshop or whatever is your favorite graphics arts editor, you can do a crop window like that, click crop. And there we've created a image which we can now file save to some convenient format like JPEG or whatever. And we've done this spectacular synthetic terrain image where we use a synthetic terrain to enhance a satellite photo presentation of uh, Mount Rainier. And uh, we can use that in a website or however we want to use it. By the way, if you look close at some of these things, like uh, let's turn the SR SRTM terrain back up to uh, full 100%. You can see that right at the top of uh, Mount Rainier, as we zoom in, there's actually a crater there. This is the crater from, because uh, Mount Rainier is a volcano, and you can see there's some craters here from the last time that uh, Mount Rainier has uh, erupted. So all that is pretty cool, and all that is in a free product. Uh, Manifold System uh, uh, Release 9 is the commercial product. Manifold Viewer is the free version. Uh, even though it is read-only, there's still a seeming infinity amount of stuff that you can do with it. You can... Uh, it's very fast, and it's fast because it's uh, just like Release 9. It's fully CPU parallel, and it's automatically GPU parallel as well. It, does, it has the full suite of uh, uh, analytics like Release 9 does, like S uh, SQL and all those other wonderful things. See some of the other videos to see uh, the various things that viewer can do. It can read hundreds of formats. It can connect to databases. It can do all that cool stuff. So uh, download it. There's no strings attached. You don't have to register. You don't have to give it your email. There's no adware. There's no attempts to upsell. There's no marketing. There's no begging for donations. None of that. It's just free software in the old style where you can download it for free, use it however you like for commercial purposes, uh, share it with your friends, and uh, no strings attached. So enjoy. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And goodbye from Manifold Land. 
Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.